everybody, it's Eric Johnson from Airtay Throws Nation. In today's video, we are gonna talk about three common mistakes using multiple female throwers, varying in ages, and showing you common mistakes they make when it comes to the stand throw. So thrower number one here, she really has an, what we call an inverted orbit, and you're gonna notice that when that orbit is inverted, it's gonna tend to lend to having the upper body go really, really active, and that's gonna make your throws training really difficult and slower so getting the orbit up is going to be your first big thing that you're going to really want to focus on and you can see that how that athlete pulls around now the second athlete we we're kind of working the same we we're trying to teach this athlete a restricted motion this is what we call as a pre-block and what we do is we kind of purposely restrict motion and so that we're going to be teaching how to move that orbit kind of into position and so that we're teaching the athlete to keep the discus away and pull around and into the throw and you're gonna see nice progress being made this is early in this athlete as they start when they started training with me now when we're kind of leading into that look at this athlete this is one of our young athletes from Australia and her dad is one of our throwing chain reaction member coaches so they have done an absolute fantastic job and this young athlete keeps that arm so far away and up and that really allows for that big nice snappy pull now this athlete athlete here was a former Olympian, very successful thrower from Jamaica, and she trained with us for a little bit, had a couple of years off, so we were looking at her stand throw. So you're going to notice that we were trying to retool her stand throw, and you're going to see that she had a lot of extra motion because she's a more advanced thrower, but you could see she created great stretch, and she would kind of go from a low to a high, but did hit a high point. All right, so now that we've like kind of looked at the orbit for each athlete, we're gonna look at a couple of main variables that are gonna just really help each athlete. One of the things is you're gonna notice the athlete up in the upper left. Again, notice how the orbit goes down low and notice how that pulls the chest out of position. This athlete's really flexible. You tend to see that with many female throwers, tend to have much better flexibility than male throwers. Sometimes that's a good thing and sometimes that's not. So you're gonna look at the thrower up here and you're gonna see that this athlete athlete winds the discus down too low, which is actually pulling the shoulders out of position, and that's going to affect the block arm. Now, you're going to look here. Look at this young athlete. I think this athlete of the four actually has the best position of the discus. Look at how that discus and look at this kind of 90 degree angle. This is a really, really key thing. Now, here's the Olympian, right? This athlete has a, a 61 plus meter PR, a world rank top 30 in the world. Now, in 2016, she does get that discus up to that high point. So what you're going to notice is, is a really nice counterbalance and that allows the athlete to move around. Now this athlete is doing what we call a pre-block, which is restricted uh, stand throw position. It's not technically a stand throw. It's a position what we refer to as a pillar six drill that's intended specifically to have her pull the discus around. And so we're limiting how, how much she can move the lower body, but we're trying to teach kind of that orbit. So now when you watch each of these athletes and we kind of just rewind it back and you watch them take a throw watch the difference in the orbit and look at the the, the quality of the movement and that is what's going to be super important and the biggest thing that's going to help you in your training is to be able to get that discus up into that high point and you're going to notice again that's what really makes the big difference and so it's something as simple as this. Now there's a number of ways and there's numbers of reasons why this can't necessarily be the most effective. But again, notice even here, the young athlete compared to the older, more experienced world-class athlete. But you're gonna notice the one thing that the world-class athlete does better than everybody else is move the arm here. Ready? So watch as she comes. Watch the balance arm, the block arm. And that's something you'll see that's going to really make the big difference. Whereas this athlete, when the discus drops, the shoulder's going to pull. This is going to be a big issue. And so you're going to notice here, the more experienced athlete, look at that as she's going to be able to come through. You're going to see that nice, big, long radius setting that discus into the orbit. And that's going to make all the difference in the world. So simple tip for you guys. Hopefully that helps. We're going to be coming at you with a lot of new stuff. So be sure to hit that subscribe button, comment below on anything else you'd like to see. And we will see you 
on the next video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. As you can see, there's a lot that goes into what we do with the Throwing Chain Reaction System. If you would like to learn more about how to structure your practices and find the things that help unlock your potential, click the link below and we will see you on the next video.